Okay, so this is another mechanism problem. We're supposed to show the mechanism by which we get the starting materials to the product. And he said something weird. He said, only a small amount of this in equilibrium with the molecule on the left. So I guess that means that we could summarize that information like this. He's saying that we're actually only going to produce a small amount of this product in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, so as usual, remember that you don't assume that in a mechanism problem you're producing the major product. We're just trying to show how to show this, even Does though it might never be. Uh, let's see. I don't know yet. We'll see. Okay. We don't know up front, but we'll help in what we want, so we have to pay attention to everything. All right, as usual, things are not obvious. We have to so stop and think for a second. Is that a hidden part of you? This one up here? Yeah. All right, excellent. Yeah, you should always watch for that. How do you know it's a hidden carbonyl? Because it's got bonds to two electronegative atoms. In fact, um, we know that this is a uh, hemiacetal. Um, and again, because it's got bonds to two oxygens. Remember that that family of molecules has bonds to two oxygens. So, yeah, Wait, that might be helpful. Sorry? It's, a, how is it? it's an acetal. You mean it's yeah, I was wrong. You're right. This I is mean, a full, full acetal. Because it's a hydrogen. That's right. Well, I thought that whenever there's an OH, that means it's hemi. That's right, but there is no OH here. Oh, I'm not. Clear. The OH is too far away. Oh, okay. There is no OH on this. Uh, I think I mentioned before, it's a really good idea to asterisk carbonyls and hidden carbonyls. So I'm going to put an asterisk here to indicate to me that this is a hidden carbonyl. So that's a full acetal. Hidden carbonyl, that would then be carbonyls. It's the same point, right? Yeah, so any, uh, it's a good idea to put an asterisk on carbonyl carbons, and it's also a good idea to put an asterisk on hidden carbonyl carbons. Are those the same place? Yeah, and, well, yeah. So in this case, there are no carbonyl carbons, yeah. but this is a hidden carbonyl carbon. So I'll put the asterisk on that. And it could become a carbonyl carbon. That's right. right. That's okay. what the asterisk is reminding me. Thing. That's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So again, thought will be required. Okay. All right. Now we always try to start by numbering. But uh, I'm not seeing any landmarks in this problem. There aren't any nice methyl groups sticking out or any isotopes of oxygen sticking out. So um, there might be a way to number here, but it's not obvious to me. So I'm going to give up what on that. A hydroxy group? Well, the problem is, so you're saying maybe this is this. Yeah. That could be, but we know that in this type of problem, think that things can easily stop being hydroxy groups in the problems we've been working on. So actually, that would not be very reliable. It's so far away. Like that one on the yeah. right, it's one away from it. Yeah, that's right. So um, we definitely can't assume, so we can't, um, certainly this hydroxy group could change. Of course, this might rotate to put this up here. Yeah. But um, yeah, we, uh, uh, it's very likely this won't be a hydroxy in the final product. Okay, okay. so um, we're going to do something else. Instead, let's just ask if we know what would be happening in the first year. So do we know what's going to happen first year? Yeah, we've got this acid. So since we've seen there's a hidden carbonyl, we should reveal that carbonyl. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do that. So let's draw what this will look like uh, when we uh, reveal the carbonyl. Yeah, you know, uh, I think he was a little sloppy here. Usually you do need uh, to have some water in the mix uh, to reveal a hidden carbonyl. So I'm just going to assume that there's some water here to reveal this, uh, this hidden carbonyl. Because he doesn't put everything in that you need. Okay. Well, um, maybe, maybe he doesn't actually want us to do that then here. This is supposed to be a mechanism problem, right? So um, let's actually show the mechanism. So we have this.
All right, so the first step is to protonate uh, one of these uh, oxygens over here. So I'll show that. And it doesn't really matter which one you protonate because this is symmetrical on both sides. So you can start with either one. You know, protonate OH for water. This one down here? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe then we should do that first. So we could uh, protonate uh, that um, as well. Um, I think we'll probably be best off. Well, it's tough. Um, can we try though with that way? Because I think it's, I think it's protonating the OH. But can we try with the, what you were just doing? Because that's what I did originally, and then I couldn't get anywhere. It would be helpful if we tried. Okay. So uh, once you protonate this, this would look like this, and then it would leave, right? It, but wait, aren't you going to bring the lone pairs down on that oxygen and make a carbon middle? You could, but that's just resonance. Remember that it doesn't matter whether you, sh uh, whether you show pi uh, electrons moving inside the molecule or not. Um, that's just resonance. So you can show it uh, either way. But if, we're, I mean, okay. but if we're trying to make hidden carbon yields, Yeah, if, if you're trying to actually reveal the carbon yield here, yeah, maybe that is a good idea. So yeah, we can show uh, this coming in and kicking this off. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Um, so uh, then that would give us. Sorry. Can, how do we know to even do this, to kick off? Just because there's a positive charge there. And... Uh, well, uh, we know that partly because uh, at this point we're supposed to have uh, totally mastered the re uh, the reaction by which hidden carbonyls are revealed. Um, and so we should know that the way that happens is, uh, after all, remember that the way you reveal a hidden carbonyl is um, usually bringing the carbonyl oxygen from water, right? So we have to kick both of these oxygens off to make room for the, the new oxygen that's bringing in the carbonyl. Okay. The whole reason that we protonate first is to make this into a better leaving group. We protonate first to make this into a better leaving group, uh, and then it's going to leave. And then if you're really going to reveal the carbonyl, you would protonate this. Um, and that would also uh, make this leave, uh, and then there would be room for the carbonyl oxygen to come in, uh, in the water. Uh, okay, so... I'll give us this. I know that we want to make a four-membered ring, so if we brought that oxygen down um, to make a four-membered ring, I don't know how we're going to get rid of that double bond. And right. So basically, if we try doing it this way, we, we, we're, um, we're, we're not going to get to the product. Um, we can't see how to do that. All right, and actually, I can see wrong now. I was wrong when I said that numbering wouldn't help us. Uh, as usual, numbering would help us here. But anyway, how do you know whether something will work? You give it a shot, and if you seem like you're getting stuck, you give up. All right, I, I kind of agree with you that we're getting stuck here. This isn't working. Um, let's go back and try numbering again. Um, let's number it like this. One, no. Yeah, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. These do certainly seem to correspond to each other in these two pictures. Now, I don't know this for sure. But it seems like there's a good chance that this ring is the same as this ring. I mean, uh, talk about a landmark. I said there was no landmarks, but this is a pretty big landmark here, this uh, five-membered ring that contains this oxygen. Now, again, I can't be sure these numbers match because maybe there's something that's changing uh, these carbons between the two pictures here. Uh, but this is a good guess to start with, especially when we remember that the instructor knows these are hard problems. He usually will give you a landmark. So you have to have a little faith that things that look like landmarks really are landmarks. Uh, of course, if you're a real chemist in the lab, I guess you would rely on nature to put in landmarks. But for us, we, we can rely on the instructor. Okay. So, um, all right. So we can put in those numbers here. So, uh, 
let's think about uh, the changes that um, we need to uh, have uh, happen here. Um, so we just tried protonating the O's in the ring. That's clearly not working. So maybe we should try protonating the OH. And do something with that. So we need to form a new to that, to that three to make that four membered ring. So I think to form water and then that will form a positive charge and then bring those electrons. 